Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Cosmic Cafe, the companion podcast for thecosmiccircus.com. I'm Isla Ruby, and we have an awesome chat for you today. I sat down recently over Zoom with Matt Youngberg from Skydance Animation. We talked about his new short in the Luck Universe. Here's the interview. I hope you enjoy. All right. So I'm Isla Ruby from the Cosmic Circus, and I'm here with Matt Youngberg. Uh, thanks for being here. Of course. Happy to be here. Um, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm Matt Youngberg. I'm the director of the Bad Luck Spec short uh, for Skydance. Uh, it's my first project that I was a, uh, able to do at Skydance. Uh, but previous to that, I was a, a executive producer of things like uh, DuckTales, the reboot, uh, Ben 10, Transformers Animated, you know, and director on Teen Titans. So, you know, I've, I've had a long, illustrious career. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, we're here to talk a little bit about your your short and you mentioned that the the bad luck spot. Um and yeah. it's a it's a spin-off of of luck. Can you, you know, tell me a little bit about about the project? I watched it. It was so cute. Um I'm oh, excited great. to talk about it. Oh, great. I'm I'm glad you were able to watch it. Uh it it was a really fun project to work on. There was a um so there was this kernel of an idea uh early on uh, of following these bunnies. Uh, after they get the the spec off of the shoe of Sam from the feature, mm -hmm. so the and there we thought there was a really fun opportunity to follow those hazmat bunnies right out of the feature, and see where they go with that spec, and to see what their kind of day to day operation is to get <laughs> rid of a piece of bad luck. Uh, you know, it's this thing that you know when you're telling a story in the film, you're not able to actually diverge and tell that kind mm -hmm. of story. So, um, so in the short, we we took that as our jumping off point. And mm -hmm. then we just kind of sat around, come up, came up with gags and ideas. And the first thing we hit on was this giant hammer. And it was like, okay, so this is, that's their mechanism for getting rid of, rid of bad <laughs> luck was to smash it out of existence. So because it's bad luck, uh, bad luck spec, just by virtue of being around it, something bad is gonna happen. And so mm -hmm. that's that was kind of our jumping off point. So it, the idea was to just start there and then escalate the problems more and more and more and more <laughs> so that by the end of the short, even when you think they've succeeded, uh, it's the escalation happens and things explode and I don't <laughs> want to get too far into it. Uh, but if you've seen the film, things weave back into the film uh, from our short. So yeah, it was, uh, that's, that's really kind of the the uh, the inspiration behind the short. So you mentioned that you guys came up with the hammer, but all of the um like all of the attempts to just destroy you know that bad luck spot, they're just super physical, and the bunnies don't yeah. talk. They you <laughs> yes. know it's all it's all in their faces and just all of the stuff they're dealing with. Can you can you talk a little bit about that? Because it's just like it's just a very physical, funny comedy that is super appealing. <laughs> Yeah, I think that was part of the appeal of doing the short. Part of why we wanted to follow these hazmat bunnies was this idea that we could, because we're not telling a, a feature film story, we can tell something uh, smaller. So we really were inspired by, you know, classic animation, classic cartoons. And it was like, okay, so we have these hazmat bunnies. We love the way they look. We love these, the way they have these little suits. And so the first idea was, okay, these suits can protect them from harm. Mm -hmm. And they're 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 going to be more squishy and stretchy than than any like body would be. So it's like okay, well we can really lean into that then. So we when we hammer them, when we hit them, when we <laughs> smash them, we can really lean into the cartooniness of it because they're going to get squashed and stretched and all these kind of things. And even the sound effects is another wonderful mm -hmm. thing that we could lace into there. It's like so instead of finding instead of sounding like violent hits and things like that, it's that you have these squeaks like squeaky toys kind of like. And everything just gets more comedic that way. And so it it really, uh, it was really fun to be able to take the, the the film of luck, stay in that land, but then to push what kind of comedy we could do there. You know, what how physical can we get with these characters without breaking the rules of the world? Now, the music also really stands out for me um, in that it just kind of pairs so beautifully with with the short and it also fits in with the larger you know larger luck movie um yeah did you guys did you kind of start with that how did that um 
how did you get the music? How did, how does that oh, work? Well, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, since we are telling the same story in the same land, you know, we did, uh, you know, we were inspired by the music of the short, but then we, had, we went back to the composer of the short and asked him to, to revisit the film, the film score for the short. And so, you know, it, it was the same people working on it and, you know, and it was this amazing, yeah, it just sounds amazing. But then we were able to add these little, uh, new things like the the theme song and the end credits, you know, these things that still fit the film, but was very specific to the short that you couldn't, you know, that that is still hearkening back to those old uh, shorts of the of animation yesteryear, mm -hmm. but having a modern sensibility to it. The, just like um, the short. The opening, I think, title card and the closing closing credits seemed very much in line with um, like the the old animation, you know, Looney Tunes, all of that stuff. It just seemed very, um, I guess, for lack of a better word, retro, and that was really cool. Yeah, yeah, it was a, a little bit of an homage there, uh, and but but the amazing thing is, it still sounded like the the movie. So it still yeah. it was like you have the film score, but you you just added these little things in that made it feel like a short from yesteryear. Yeah. Okay, so you know there we we talked a little bit about the comedy. Um, are, were there any like specific shows or or movies or anything specifically? I guess that kind of influenced um, influenced the short besides you know the greater luck universe because even even there's like this action sequence with the pig and I think I'm forgetting the name from the movie. Um, it just was like a really cool. It, it felt like it was, you know, kind of um, inspired by something. And I'm curious about uh, that. Like the, the car chase, you mean? Yes, that, the car chase. Part? Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Like, uh, I don't know if there was a specific inspiration. It's 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 mostly it's probably my own influence there <laughs> coming in because I, 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 I've, you know, my work, I've worked my whole career yeah. in kind of the action side of things. But I also but I also always try to infuse it with comedy. Yeah, because I, I to me, it's just like that. I love that that combination and so and so I think a lot of that influences me like finding the most dynamic way of of telling the story but still making it funny so it was like the, even though it looked very dynamic and cool the, the the gags were still kind of the centerpiece we want to make sure that you never lost the joke within how the di the dynamic of something because there there are times you could push it too far where it just becomes an action set piece and that's mm -hmm. not what we wanted to do we wanted to make sure that the the comedy and the escalation of problems continued throughout the short uh so keeping that the focus but then adding that dynamic in that i enjoy was just you know that's just how i think <laughs> that's awesome so so luck is is an original film right and you've you mentioned earlier you know you've had this experience working in the the DuckTales reboot and you know you've worked in Ben 10 and all of those things have kind of this pre-existing fandom and pre-existing um like kind of uh I I guess IP to draw from how yeah. like how was that because this is something you know it's still pretty new it's still a new universe Yeah uh true it is luckily the the uh, the feature film did a lot of the heavy lifting of, yeah. of finding finding what this, the the world was and defining what the world was. Um, so we had that. Uh, so really, this was just an opportunity to to play in that world a little mm -hmm. bit more and just expand the ideas that were already present there. Um, and so it wasn't you know too different than than adapting an IP, but it's just it's really fun to be able to hopefully uh, create a connection to an audience. Yeah with something new that they mm -hmm. haven't seen before. And, you know, these hazmat bunnies, they were a crew favorite. And so mm -hmm. it was like, hopefully this will be fan <laughs> favorites as well, you know, that, because it really is the, uh, an opportunity there, I think, for the audience to connect with these characters further than they could from the feature, because, you know, they're only a bit part, but now they can be showcased. I am. Um, so I, I have a six-year-old daughter who's who loved luck and the bunnies were one of the things that that stuck out for her obviously along oh, with the cat so <laughs> I'm, I'm asking this partially for her and also because of her girl scout troop because they're now also obsessed with luck is there you know <laughs> are there plans that you can talk about for any more um anything more in the luck universe because uh <laughs> unfortunately nothing that i could talk about now okay um but it, i will say that it is it was really fun to be able to revisit that world. It was this is really a fun opportunity. It, and it, I, I feel like it did a great job of, of expanding uh, the stories that we can tell, no matter what kind of 
film that we make, the idea at Skydance is to always create a world that we can revisit. Uh, mm -hmm. or that or that we would want to revisit or that yeah. that audience would want to go back to rather uh and so um hopefully with any of the films that we make we can we can find opportunities to expand those worlds and and have the audience continue to be drawn in um now so you were the director of this short but you've made um you know you've made a couple of transitions in in your career before you were i think a storyboard artist i read and then a writer and now you've you've done a, a ton of amazing directing work can you talk about um like what that transition's been like and how it's been maybe how like how directing this is different than your you know writing um well it, i think the at the core i'm always still just trying to tell the best story that I can tell, no matter what what position I'm in. Uh, I and for me, uh, I always love a new opportunity and a new challenge. That's kind of what drives me in my career. That that, um, and so being able to come to Skydance and jump into this new medium, which is the computer animation, whereas most of the stuff I had been uh, 2D, and to do it uh, in a more feature like way. You know, this short mm -hmm. is was crafted much more like a feature than uh a television series might be um but my approach is still always like core telling the best kind of story that i can tell given the medium that i have uh and so that's that makes the transition easy but the fun and the fun of the challenge is learning a new way of doing it mm -hmm. um you know like at skydance it was really wonderful to be able to work with the you know a lot of veterans uh, at skydance and veterans of cg animation um and to learn from their experience and to kind of just, you know, get our mind meld so that we could kind of uh, make the best short we could make. Um, yeah. Um, is there anything else that, you know, what we haven't talked about, about uh, Bad Luck Spot that you kind of want people to know about or that you want to point out? Um, I don't know if we, we hit on this at all, but uh, I think there was a real fun challenge in it that it was, uh, a fully pantomimed mm -hmm. short you know there wasn't any uh any acting in terms of voice acting and dialogue to to go off of so we really the the i think there was a really really fun challenge of telling the story purely from the visuals alone and yeah. you know uh that was a really fun challenge it was really really that's like a pure way of trying of doing animation of just like making sure the audience can connect with these characters without telling you anything about them. And mm -hmm. I think we hope, I hope we pulled it off. <laughs> I think you totally did. Mm -hmm. um, now, can you share at all what you're working on next or anything like that? Unfortunately, no, I, uh, <laughs> you can, yeah. you can write down TBD. Uh, <laughs> so we'll, we'll see what happens from here. Um, but uh, suffice it to say, I'm excited to be working at Skydance and uh, whatever happens next, I hope, uh, I'll get to continue to connect with audiences. So. Well, I'm sure it's going to be awesome. And thank you so much for being here and chatting with me. Of course. Thank you. Thank you for listening. You can find the companion article for this podcast, along with all the other news for those who like superheroes, science fiction, and fantasy films, TV shows, and other media at thecosmiccircus.com. Have a great day.